So after watching this video, you should be able to describe the pathway of horizontal conjugate eye movement control systems. The key components to this is that the eyes move together. That's what the conjugate part means. And in this case, we're talking about moving the eyes right or left. If you're going to do this, you need extraocular muscles. So we're going to abduct and adduct eyes. And of course, we need cranial nerve nuclei and their associated cranial nerves and some sort of connection between the cranial nerve nuclei. Okay, let's draw some eyes. So here is a right eye and a left eye, the patient's looking at us. And in this case, for our example, let's have the eyes move conjugately to the left. So we'll put an arrow here and show the eyes are supposed to be going to the left. What do we need to do this? Well, the left eye needs to move away from the midline. It needs to abduct, so we need the lateral rectus of the left eye to contract. And for the right eye, we need to move it towards the midline, we need to adduct, and we need the right medial rectus. So of course we need the brain stem here, which is made up of the midbrain, pons, and medulla, to be able to coordinate all this because we need cranial nerves. So let's start with the left lateral rectus. That muscle is going to contract from a cranial nerve called the abducens nerve. And since uh, cranial nerves innervate ipsilateral structures, we have the left cranial nerve 6, the left abducens nerve, and its associated nuclei is going to be the left abducens nucleus in the caudal pontine tegmentum. Now let's look at the, the right eye. The right medial rectus needs to contract, and that's going to be from the right oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3. And its cell body, cell bodies are found in the right oculomotor nucleus that's found in the midbrain tegmentum. All right, now we have a problem here because we have to coordinate these two nuclei. They have to talk to each other. The way that works is actually in the abducens nucleus, there are some uh, cell bodies that give rise to axons that are going to cross the midline, in this case it's going to cross over to the right side, and then travel up the brainstem white matter and talk to the contralateral oculomotor nucleus. And that structure is going to, in this case, be the right medial longitudinal fasciculus or the right MLF. Now it doesn't matter what eye movement control we're going to do, the abducens nucleus is responsible then for all conjugate horizontal eye movements. We could even call the abducens nucleus the center for ipsilateral conjugate horizontal eye movements because it controls six, which abducts the ipsilateral eye, and it controls the contralateral three, which adducts the contralateral eye via the contralateral MLF. So it doesn't matter what eye movement control system we're talking about, they all have to talk to the ipsilateral abducens nucleus. So if we have a VOR to the right or left that has to talk to the abducens nucleus, if a smooth pursuit or saccade to the right or left, they all have to talk to the abducens nucleus. Now, how they're going to talk to the abducens nucleus is going to be different. There's going to be some different parts of the pathway, but the common pathway for all of these movements is always going to be the abducens nucleus. And that's because it gives rise to these cranial nerves that control the abduction and adduction of the eyes so they move together. So what we're going to build on is how the different eye movement control systems talk to the left abducens nucleus to move the eyes conjugately to the left for these different eye movement control systems or how they talk to the right abducens nucleus to move the eyes conjugately to the right with these different eye movement control systems. And that concludes this video on horizontal conjugate eye movement control systems.